Hey everybody, welcome to the latest installment of 10 Minutes on Brand. I'm Will Strawn, Partner and Chief Growth Officer here at Focus Lab. This week, I had the pleasure of speaking with Sharice Bennett, Project Management Director here at Focus Lab, about the topic of internal brand launch, which is basically how do you share your new brand if you went through a rebrand with your internal team before you do an external launch. And with that, let's go ahead and jump over to our conversation. All right, Sharice, I am really excited to talk to you today about internal brand launch. Um, you, as our project man management director, have seen um, all types of brand rollouts from the good, the bad, the ugly, with your nearly eight years of experience here at Focus Lab. Um, so kind of my first question out of the gate is, when should a company let their team know that they're even going through some sort of brand evolution exercise? Yeah, that's actually a question that comes up a lot. And we typically say it's not only okay, but good to let the entire team know that you're undergoing a rebrand. Mm. However, that's kind of where we say stop. We don't encourage you to share outside the project team about the work that you're going through mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of decisions and discussions that happen to inform the new brand that aren't going to be immediately clear if you just start showing quick snapshots to get like gut reactions from other teammates. Okay. So um, we actually really, really hate it when people do the, oh, I just want to see a gut reaction from somebody uh, else on the team because you're putting so much weight on a single element without the full context, without knowing all the discussions and decisions that were made to get to that point. So you can let them know that you're going right. through a rebrand, but then just say, you'll find out later. You got to cut them off at that point. Okay, so you, you let them know, hey, we're doing something. There will be an announcement one day, but we're going to keep it relatively under wraps until we get it to a point where we feel really good about it. Now, um, that being said, is there anything else you share internally in between, hey, we're going through this and the announcement, or is it just kind of dead silent at that point? So this is definitely a layered, nuanced question, depending on the client team and the overall client setup. So if there is someone from the executive team um, that's not involved in the weekly meetings, it's really okay. important to make sure they're still being kept informed of the work um, sure. because uh, their first view of the brand should not happen at the same time as the rest of the company. Um, okay. That's just generally a recipe for disaster. Um, so it's helpful to include key team members that the new brand or communications, it's going to affect their work specifically. But it needs to be very carefully done um, and with as much guidance as possible on how the brand direction is really going. So once you start shifting the attention to rolling out the new brand, you mm -hmm. will need a lot of help. So um, that's when it starts to get a little bit fuzzier as far as who you can involve. But we, we prefer to keep it pretty, pretty quiet. Okay. So it's kind of like there's layers of teams that are going to see the work. The first layer is kind of the core team that's going to be working with, you know, the agency like Focus Up when they're going through the rebrand. That's the, those are the people that are going to see the work come to life every single week and give feedback. Then it sounds like there's another layer of people behind them that might be um, other executives that aren't in the week to week. And then maybe other like key brand evangelists that the company currently has. Mm -hmm. And then the last layer is everyone else. So it kind of is like, uh, it's like a green, yellow, red. Core team is green, share everything. Executive team, yellow, they can kind of see things once they reach an appropriate point. And then red is the broader team. We want them to be exposed to the new brand when it's ready, when it can really leave an impact. Um, is that kind of what you think? Is that another way to think about it? Yeah, and it's also like knowing that when you do finally share it with the whole team, it's kind mm -hmm. of like a giant present and it's really exciting and it's not as exciting if they've already seen glimpses of it or like seen little trickles it's super exciting when you just kind of like rip the band-aid off and it's just it's all there it's brand new the whole story is behind it um usually there's swag accompanied with it uh mm -hmm. and you get the full big picture not just like little dribbles of what might be coming Gotcha. So once the rebrand is done, um, what are some of the first initial steps you think, you know, clients should take to start preparing for that big 
initial internal launch, that little kind of uh, event you mentioned? Well, we, we definitely encourage our client teams to plan to do some sort of in, internal presentation, some sort of rollout, whether that's with a really big bang with a party and swag, or even if it just can only be like a remote presentation. But um, ideally, there's something to go along with this, something to really build the excitement to get the whole company um, on board and proud of the new direction that the company is going from a branding perspective. Uh, it puts a lot of excitement to to make sure that everyone on the team knows why and really have the support and, and confidence to move forward with this great new narrative. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's you've got to build momentum from the inside out. Rebranding on its own is a feat, right? It's it is it is a big lift for a lot of companies, but it's the payoff is great. But if you want to get that big payoff at the end, you got to start internal. You got to build excitement and momentum with your team because if they're bought in and they're excited about it, you assume and 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 what we've seen is is the result it performs even better on the external world. Are there any kind of key takeaways or recommendations that you think would be important to kind of share when doing that internal launch? Like, I know you mentioned swag. Like, are there any other kind of thoughts that you have around that? I mean, it's also really important to build up the story. Like, you don't just start the presentation, here's our new brand, but like help sort of show the evolution from this is where we started this is some of the process that we went through with Focus Lab and this, this is our end result and this is why it matters. And this is, um, the impact and the story behind that and how it projects into the future of the company mm-hmm. as well. So that there's a lot of love, um, and immediate understanding behind that transition. Gotcha. So it makes it mean more. It's kind of like if you're reading a book. There's a reason why you build up to the end, right? Just don't give the grand reveal at the beginning. That's a really yeah. great recommendation. I know uh, a lot of our clients, they always try to build excitement. And I'll never forget the Sales Loft brand launch. Um, do you remember they did that What's in the Box campaign where mm-hmm. they sent out uh, these boxes to industry influencers and customers and clients and all these people. And they sent this box and they said, don't open it until this drop down date. And they put like hashtag what's in the box. And there are all these people on social media and on LinkedIn sharing like what is in the sales loft box. Um, and then on the day when they launched their brand, people opened it. And I thought that was so cool because it, it helped build this like excitement, even pre launch. That's definitely one of my most memorable, um, launches that I can remember, but it was kind of like that was an internal tease first and then it built externally. I know we're running short on time. So I've got one last question. I would love to sneak in here. Um, Say you're going through a rebrand. We've talked about those layered teams, right? Your core team, your broader kind of like executive team, and then the, the, the rest of the crew. What do you do if the brand work leaks while you're prepping for a launch or when you're in the middle of a rebrand? Like, Are there any concerns with that? Leaks are definitely a concern because of how they could be handled by the client. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have no control over how the client handles that. Um, We can obviously talk about it and provide a little bit of insight, but sometimes leaks can lead to the client team second guessing the direction and decisions that they've already made. Um, If someone is weighing in with very little perspective to how we got to the point that we're at, um, and that's also why we, we generally don't encourage sharing work in progress with third parties or even significant others. Um, because if you don't share all the reasoning and the history that led to why you're seeing a mark or a logo type in a certain direction, they miss the whole picture and you're yeah. not getting the context and the clarity that everyone on the, the client team has. So leaks are bad. Try not to do it. Try not to do it. Yeah. I- <laughs> I know we, we always say don't screenshot this logo and drop it in a Slack group with your buddies because at the end of the day, they're just the feedback you're going to get is I like it. I don't like it. I don't get it. It looks like X, Y, and Z. And we realize that no one will ever consume that brand in that limited vis- like singular point of view, right? No one just chooses the brands they work with based off their logo. They evaluate the brand, right? Which is so much more than that. But 
once you do that, then these people start putting little thoughts and bugs in your ear and it's hard to not listen to them. So avoid it if and at all times, if possible. Don't do it or Sharice will come after you. It's basically yeah. what happens. Yeah, it's well, bad. Cool. <laughs> Well, Sharice, we're at 10 minutes. Thank you so much for your time today. I know uh, internal brand launch is something we could talk about a lot, um, but I think this is a really great kind of top level for a lot of people that are going through a rebrand um, or that are considering because you should start planning your internal brand launch really the moment your rebrand starts. And it's easy to forget about because everyone goes straight to those external launches. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you.